GTFO has always been a game shrouded in mysteries and darkness, and with the release of Rundown 8, even more mysteries were added in for us to discover. You may or may not have heard about secret commands locked away in the depths of the game files, and in today's video, we're going to take a look at those 10 hidden commands and what will happen to you and your fellow prisoners should you dare input them into a terminal console. But beware, as some of these commands have drastic effects on your current mission and can easily lead to a failed expedition should you use them haphazardly. For this reason, I recommend only utilizing these commands when playing with close friends and when completing the mission isn't your primary focus. And now that you've been warned and you know what you're getting into, let's start revealing some secrets. Okay, so starting off, let's go over some of the commands that aren't quite as impactful as the rest. The first one on the list being startgtfo.exe. Putting this command into a terminal will just simply open up the official GTFO website on whatever your active browser is on your computer. And that's really all there is to it. This is not a hidden website you can only get to through this command, you can get to it through a manner of other methods. It's just a way to in-game have an easter egg that takes you straight to the official GTFO website. So if you haven't been there before, then feel free to put the command in or just simply open up your browser and go to it without opening up the game and check it out. As for the second command, it is quite similar. This one is going to be startdenofwolves.exe. If you have not heard about Den of Wolves, it is 10 Chambers' next game that they've been working on for quite a while. And now that GTFO has been finished and no other major updates are planned for it, they are going full force on trying to complete this game, which they haven't given us a rough estimate on when the game will be completed. But if you're interested in a new techno thriller heist game that they've released a few trailers on, then hey, go check out the website, maybe tune back in every so often, and they might have a few teasers or leaks on there as they get closer to the release of the game itself. And the third non-impactful command in the game is going to be startprivateencryption.exe. And this is going to open up a little special lore log, a lore log that you can only access by using this command. Although, when you open it up and you start reading through, you might notice that it looks a little bit familiar, and that's because it's almost the exact same as one of the lore logs we found back in Alternate Rundown 5. The main difference though being in the original lore log, there are 5 different messages in it, but 3 of them were encrypted and therefore we can only read 2 out of 5. In this version of it, we can actually read one more of them, specifically the fifth one, and it will give us a little bit more information in regard to the lore log, but it also gives you a string of numbers, which if you take these and go to Facebook with them, I know, Facebook of all places, I don't know if people really still use that website, but hey, maybe they do, you'll be able to find an actual profile for Frank Bishop himself. I don't think there's any secrets or lore pieces tied in with this website at all. I think it's more so again just an easter egg because in the lore log it does talk about how there's one piece of information or one article about him that they couldn't actually delete from the internet when they were trying to just sort of make it so Frank Bishop never really existed in the eyes of the world. And I think this Facebook profile is supposed to be that article that they could not delete, so yeah, if you want to check it out, go on ahead. A bit of an interesting profile picture they chose for him, but hey, you know what, I'm not going to judge. Moving away from those three commands, let's start talking about the ones that have a little bit more impact on level. These are kind of more miscellaneous commands, but the fourth one is going to be startlighttesting.exe. Putting this command into a terminal in any level will turn all the lights off for the remainder of the mission, so you will be surrounded in pitch black darkness. And if you're wondering, no. If you put the command in a second time after putting in the first time to try to return the lights, that's not going to work. This command can only turn them off, not turn them back on. But if you are someone who loves to utilize things like long range flashlights or glow sticks or Maybe you are the 0.001% of the community that actually unironically uses glow stick power boosters, then hey, this is the command for you. Go into a well lit level, put the command into the very first terminal you find, plunge the level in pitch black darkness, and then have fun with your glow sticks. As for command number five, this one is going to be startventilationoverride.exe. 
If you are someone who hates infection and you hate fog and you really, really hate infectious fog, you're going to hate this command because putting this in will cause a level to almost completely fill up with incredibly infectious fog. The reason I say incredibly is because if you are anywhere in it, or at least not towards the top part of it, you will gain 100% infection within just a few seconds. So if you want to make a level a whole lot harder on your teammates, then by all means, go on ahead, put this command in. Just be aware that you're going to have max infection, and unless if the level has a lot of different elevation points in it, you're going to be stuck at 1 HP for pretty much the entirety of the mission, which means one random projectile from a shooter or one lick from a strike or anything, and you're down for the count, and you're going to have to wait for a teammate to revive you, or you're going to very quickly return back to the lobby. And as for command number six, this one is a little bit unique in the game actually, and that would be start ammo quality control.exe. And there's actually two versions to this command. Once you type that entire thing in, you then do a space and you either type in minimum or you will type in maximum. If you type in minimum, what it will do is it will cause all of your primary ammo on you and your teammates to just completely vanish. So all the ammo you had in that pistol or hell revolver or SMG or whatever your primary gun is, Kiss it goodbye because all of it will be completely removed and you'll go down to 0%. And if you want to go even further than just hindering your primary gun, go on ahead and put in maximum instead of minimum because doing so will remove all of your primary ammo, secondary ammo, and even all of your tool. Now, you are able to, of course, give yourself more ammunition or tool refill after you put the command in. This isn't going to hard limit you at 0% for the rest of the level, but anything you have on hand will vanish. Moving on to the final batch of commands, these last four are quite similar to each other in the fact that all four of them are error alarm commands. The first one being start threat level m.exe. If you're someone who really enjoyed playing through Alternate Rundown 4 and the fact that nearly every level had at least one error alarm in it at some point, this is the command for you because all you have to do is just go straight to a terminal, put the command in, and for the rest of the expedition, you will have an error alarm that will spawn in three regular strikers or shooters every so often, and very rarely, sometimes in the way, there's actually going to be a giant striker. So pretty simple basic error alarm, it's just like that you can see in most other levels, but the unique thing about this command, as well as the next three we'll be going over, is you could put them in multiple times to actually stack the error alarms. So if you feel like three regular enemies every so often isn't really that big of a deal, Put the command in a second time and you will effectively have six of them per wave. Or if you feel like that still isn't even enough, put it in a third time and you'll have nine per wave. And if you're somebody who's absolutely psychopathic and insane, feel free to keep putting that command in over and over again until you've effectively hit the enemy cap, which I believe is roughly 25 or so regular strikers and shooters. And congrats, you have created your own makeshift surge error alarm. And if you're actually able to complete a level like that from start to finish, then kudos to you because dear god that sounds like an absolute nightmare to deal with command number eight on the list is for those of you who really enjoy food specifically you italians and pasta lovers because the command itself is start spaghetti and meatballs dot exe yep that's right i'm not joking when i say that's actually the name of the command whichever developer decided that should be it props to you i love it, it is by far the best command in this game and putting this one in will initiate an error alarm that will spawn in a wave of three regular flyers every so often. And as far as I'm aware, this will never spawn in armored flyers, although maybe there's a very, very slim chance for it. If there is, I've never witnessed it though. So if you want to deal with an error alarm, but you're tired of the regular strikers and shooters you see so often in other levels, then hey, put this one in and you'll have an error alarm with flyers. And again, if three isn't quite enough for you, then just put it in a second or third time so you get even more of them and get ready to dodge a lot because you're effectively going to be playing a bullet hell game if you put that command in too many times. Command number nine is going to follow the food trend and that command is going to be start chicken.exe. Yep, we got another food one, fried chicken, which god, as much as I enjoy eating fried chicken, I don't really enjoy this command all that much. It actually spawns in an enemy that you can't find anywhere else in the game. It was something that was added into the files a very long time ago, but never actually made it to the live game itself. And that would be the infectious shooter. This error alarm will spawn in two infectious shooters per wave, and the time between waves is actually pretty lengthy. I think the lengthiest one of all the commands on this list 
And the infectious shooters, they look like regular giant shooters, although they walk and crouch around like hybrids. They aren't actually able to punch you, so you can abuse them quite easily since their projectile attack is the only attack they have. But they do have a lot of HP, just like giant shooters. And those projectiles, while very slow, they have excellent tracking. And if they hit you, they will do a little bit of damage to you, as well as give you a bit of infection. And having only two of them on the field at once really isn't that big of a deal. But if you don't kill them quickly or you decide to keep them alive and you've got four or six or eight or even 10 of them on the field, well, as you can see in the background footage, it's pretty hectic to deal with and you're gonna find yourself getting hit fairly often. So yeah, if you wanna deal with a unique enemy you can't find anywhere else, then have fun with this command. Just make sure you don't bite off more than you can chew. And last but not least, command number 10, that is going to be startrascal.exe. And if you're wondering why it's called rascal.exe, it's actually because this is named after one of the developer's dogs. Take a look at this guy. Look at this little pupper. Isn't, isn't he just adorable? He's so cute. Just want to floof his head a little bit. But the thing is, the command itself is far from the adorableness of the actual dog. Because this error alarm will spawn in small waves of either nightmare shooters or nightmare babies every so often. I believe there's about 5, 6, or maybe 7 enemies per wave, and more often than not you're gonna get nightmare babies, but every so often you get like 1 or 2 nightmare shooters. I don't know if you could get nightmare strikers, I've never experienced it, but there might be a possibility for it. But if you want to actually see what Nightmare Babies are like outside of the one and only mission they show up and get a bit of a closer look at them in better lighting, then have fun with this command. The interesting thing about these guys is they act quite similar to that of regular Baby Strikers, but it's a bit weirder to hit them since that cocoon kind of protects them from the headshot damage multiplier, or at least it felt like that to me. And they also seem to miss their attacks really often. I don't know what it was. I wasn't really trying to dodge them, but they kept on missing their attacks. Even if I was standing perfectly still, the tongue wouldn't hit me half the time. So they're a bit of a weird wonky enemy, probably not fully fleshed out as it's not meant to be a proper enemy in the game. But yeah, if you want to experience nightmares in other levels aside from Rundown 8 or just have a closer look at the nightmare babies, have fun with this command and watch those little gremlins running around at Mach 10 and doing your best to try to survive. And that's all 10, technically 11, of the hidden commands in GTFO. It's pretty cool that 10 Chambers decided to add these into the game without actually telling the community they existed. Or at least, not telling them right away. I believe they made a tweet a while back showcasing the light testing command and hinting towards the existence of the others, but that was the extent of it. I am a little saddened though that there is no startfriend.exe command which spawns an immortal into the level. It would have been fun to mess around in certain expeditions with one, two, or maybe even three of them chasing you around the entire time. <laughs> But that's all I've got for you all today. Just wanted to put together a simple little video showcasing these special commands so people can have a little bit of fun with them. But seriously, don't use these randomly in lobbies with people you aren't good friends with. I'm fairly certain most of these commands weren't supposed to even be usable by clients and only the host of the lobby was meant to be able to activate them. But it seems like 10 Chambers made a teeny tiny mistake there and either never realized the mistake existed or they did and just decided it wasn't worth going back and fixing. Either way though, as always, if you enjoyed the video, consider liking it and maybe even sharing it with some of your friends. Although, you might want to wait until you've trolled them a little with some of these commands and had a few good laughs before you actually share the video and give them access to this forbidden knowledge. And once you do, be aware that if one of them walks in your terminal and starts laughing, you might have an error alarm coming your way. <laughs> but until next time, stay safe, have an awesome week, and I will hopefully see you all back in the next video.